Okay, I guess I should give an intro. Hell, recording is on. Welcome everybody to another wallet review call. As always on these calls, we take wallets apart and suggest some UX and UI improvements that we found along the way. In today's review, we'll be taking a look at very new Blix wallet. Uh, which is developed by, from what I know, a uh, single developer, and I'm not sure that there are like many people involved in it. So it is nice to see um, a wallet that uh, maybe we can maybe have a good influence on because it's new and the uh, developer also seems very excited about the feedback that Bitcoin Design can post. So as always, before the call, we uh, played around a little bit with Blix. We took a, a few screenshots, a uh, few Figma files, and now we'll present our findings and later on we'll submit that as a feedback to the Blix community. Before this call, we took a look at Phoenix, Breeze and uh, maybe one more wallet, I don't even remember, but yeah, our goal is to take a look at as many Lightning wallets as we can so that we can learn from them and also uh, help them improve. So guys, does anybody uh, wants to start with uh, sharing how, how they felt about uh, Blix wallet? How, what do you like in particular about it? Let's start with that. I like that they're uh, putting, uh, you know, thinking about putting a lot of features in there to, you know, try and make Lightning a little more accessible, like particularly the context screen. Uh, if you go into the settings menu, there, there, there's a feature where you can add contacts. Um, and then there's also, it looks like some, some degree of support for a lightning address or some encouragement to use it. So I thought that that was pretty good. Cool. One hundred percent. I like, uh, context. Um, yeah, also like, um, they're, they're quite feature rich, um, and it just feels like it's, a uh, it's something that uh, you know you could use to like test out like new tools and stuff that are coming in. Um, like they have like a lot of support for LNURL and um, such kind of interactions. I find it um, quite interesting how um, a small kind of like um, you know like a single developer was able to create a you know. What's getting now um, to be uh, quite a popular, or uh, at least there seems to be a demand for it now, um, or, or or interest, um, this wallet. Um, and it's not just like this large funded company, you know? Um, so like, because most of the other wallets are, um, tend, um, t tend to be that way. Um, and that's possible through like, um, like the implementations of like LND, um, uh, 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 like LND mobile and stuff. Um, so like a lot of the backend stuff is getting done. But yeah, I like this kind of, um, uh, 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 you know, kind of like uh, like pleb developers, you know, uh, working on these things versus like, you know, the just the big guys. I think it's very important for the ecosystem. Yeah, I agree. I agree with John's. Uh, very nice to see open source making moves. Like any good open source project, it starts with a single person and later on becomes a community, hopefully. So in particular, since I already spoken, I will just share what I really liked. I really liked how they use this, the front screen, uh, where you receive transactions, which we call, I think, transaction overview screen. I like how they use to post some important messages, such as uh, the burning that you need to fund a wallet in order to open a channel, or um, that you need to back up your wallet once you receive the channel. So my favorite feature is um, that they warn you about the backups once you have uh, received some funding, which is like progressive backup. That's one of my favorite features besides contacts used together with Lightning addresses. And yeah, as John said, I also like the flexibility of it. Like uh, the most important things, send, receive, you know, fund channels are all there. But if you really want to dig, dig deeper into the features, there are like a bunch of them. And I really like that the they mark them as advanced experimental so that a regular user does not need to, you know, uh, tinker about those features that if they just want to receive and pay for stuff. So that's on my end. I'm not sure if Ed and Tiana had some input about what they really liked. Hey, hey guys. Uh, yeah, so I'm a little bit uh, late to joining. 
Um, yeah, there are a few things that I quite liked about this wallet. Um, the first uh, was actually kind of already mentioned, just with the the contacts and just the importance of using labels and um, transaction descriptions, just to basically give people a better idea of like where their funds are going or where they've come from. Obviously, there are various privacy implications that come with that, um, but it's a good practice, um, particularly for sending and receiving. <clears throat> um, I thought that their, their Lightning browser, I liked the sort of app and services directory that sort of first comes up um, when they do it. Um, I thought this was pretty neat. Obviously, I think a lot of people are going to be interacting with Lightning games and things like that. So um, basically, just to have those things kind of up um, when you first go onto it is, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, Tiana, do you have any any other things? Yeah, like basically, I think I just feel really like how it's really easy to navigate out say. So like everything you need to do, it's just like right there while you open the app. You can see send, receive, and once you click on like the um, the menu, you get to see like I think basically everything you can do with the application. You see contact, you see Lightning browser, and I think the navigation there is very cool. Yeah, so that's in addition to like yeah, also the Lightning browser and how they do like organize their directory and all of that. Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry, Diana, I cut you off. Uh, if you have any more, just feel free to chime in. No, no, that's all. Ah, oh, awesome, awesome. So. Um, shall we start with sharing some of the things that we think might be improved in the Blix wallet? And since Christoph already has his famous screen behind him, maybe Christoph, do you want to maybe start? Sure, yeah, I didn't realize it's famous, but okay. Uh, yeah, you know, just to, just to add on to what Tiana said, I also found it, it, it feels like you know where everything's are, where everything is very quickly. It just seems kind of the navigation just seems very simple. And like you said, also, I like these these tips here when the wallet's empty that uh, uh, it tells you what you should be doing. It doesn't always tell you exactly how to do it, uh, but uh, you know, overall, it, I think that works well. The In the onboarding, I like the interactive parts of it. There's sometimes onboarding that is non-interactive where you just click through screens and you're like, la, 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 you know, I don't care. But here you actually have these interactive options and they're well explained, made sense to me, maybe because I'm already very familiar with this. And then I like the, the onboarding this screen here where there's some extra customization options where it said, hey, if you want to, here's stuff that you may want to set up. And I just clicked on them and it was just very easy to customize. Um, so I liked that part. And especially if you look there, there uh, the developer picked five options here. And if you look at the lightning settings screen, like there's a long list of stuff here. So I did appreciate that kind of the important ones were were uh, were offered to me to to customize very quickly at the beginning. And even if I didn't customize them there, I kind of knew. I, I realized okay, these are things I can do, and I, and you know if I wanted to do them later, then I could do that. So it was kind of good exposure. Uh, so I like that part. I mean, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any funds on Lightning. Um, I, I was able to, to deposit on-chain funds that worked very smoothly. I was not able to, to get them on Lightning. Um, the auto channel generation didn't work. Maybe I didn't deposit enough Bitcoin on there, but I also could not open a channel to my own umbrella. It just always told me no such host. And I assumed it should work because you know I scanned the QR code from 1ml.com to my node. And um, it just gave me this error message. And I've used the same method to connect to other people through the Bitcoin, uh, was it Lightning Network Plus website. So I was not able to test out the uh, uh, Lightning payments. Um, there's some small stuff that I noticed, like uh, overall, I found these sidebar navigation options very helpful. But if you click Lightning channels down here, then it takes you to a screen with the title lighting network and a balance. I would expect it to see, for example, help text here, like on other screens, like 
great, you don't have any channels yet. They will be auto-generated once you do this or that, or you can manually open channels, click here, uh, something like that. That was one thing uh, that just threw me off slightly because you have you have this screen here that starts with a challenge uh, with a balance at the top. You have this one here with on-chain funds, a balance at the top, and then you have the home screen also with a balance at the top. And it just kind of threw me off a little bit. Um, the settings I also found pretty useful and straightforward. Maybe they could be split up into different subscreens. Um, so give each one a little bit more space maybe to explain things. Um, and the lightning, the lightning apps, um, I was just not able to successfully use them. The first one, the website didn't load. The second one, there was an intro screen here for the Satoshi's place, but it just, you know, as a, as a regular consumer, this would not seem like something fun to use. Uh, for the Ellen games, I tried to interact with it. And then I tried to copy my recovery key, which pulled up the keyboard and then the whole UI went out of the screen. I was not able to get back to it and use it. Um, so, and then for the payment request, this one worked well here, the lightning roulette, but I accepted the payment request that worked great. And then I ended up on a, um, Let's see. I ended up on a resend or receive screen with a loader at the bottom that never finished. And I've had that twice. But maybe that's because I didn't have lightning funds. I'm sure that kind of really kind of blocked my experience from this. But overall, you know, I, I really like this wallet. It feels very, very simple, but feature rich. Um, I just wasn't able to get to the lightning part, which there might be some user error somewhere in there. Uh, Christoph, since you mentioned that you may have not sent enough, did you send like exactly, I, I, did they have the limit for what you should send? So if you send exactly maybe your wallet deducted fees, so it tended underfunded. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because uh, I thought I sent enough, but yeah, even, even if even if there's a minimum for auto channel creation, I still should be able to connect to my own umbrella with it, right? Because that is not really something that where where the Blixt LSP uh, you know would set any have any expectations. That's just my personal configuration. I assume. So I don't yeah. know. I did something. I uninstalled it, reinstalled it, and it still didn't work. So I don't know. So it, it never prompted you to automatically open a channel. Like it never told you it was opening a channel for you? Nope. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, my experience was very different. Speaking of your experience, Stephen, you want to go? Yeah, sure. I'll share my screen. Okay, can everybody see my Figma okay? Yes? Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just uh, laid out my screens just kind of uh, in order of um, what happened roughly. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, overall, I, I pretty much agree with everyone that it's, it's very feature rich and I'm pretty optimistic about um, this one. I was I was trying to approach it from the perspective of, you know, me as a somewhat experienced lightning user, but also trying to put myself in the shoes of you know, someone who might be onboarding to Bitcoin for the very first time. So, yeah, I liked the, the warning message up front that it's still in development and all that. Um, I use uh, an iPhone XS and uh, I had issues with this screen, uh, basically the buttons being cropped off on the edge of the screen. Um, so that looked a little bit janky. Um, uh, my, my first option, just because I was curious, because we've been talking so much about, you know, backing up and restoring wallets, I decided to tap on the restore wallet button. Um, even though I don't have a, a wallet to restore, I just wanted to see what it looked like and i um, happy to see the C phrase and restoring from iCloud. Uh, there was no back button that I could find to get back to the home screen. So I ended up having to um, close out of the app um, to uh, get, get uh, back to this screen. Um, so everything I'm saying, I basically noted in uh, notations um, that the, the Blixt developer can, can read. Um, on his own time, but I'm just kind of going to narrate through what I wrote. So I, I ended up getting back here. I tapped create wallet, and then that took me to the home screen. Um, so it's instructing me to send uh, on-chain funds um, to this address. 
So the, the one thing that I was having difficulty with is there was no clear way. I didn't, I didn't have any on-chain funds in a mobile wallet that I wanted to send. I wanted to send from a, a desktop wallet. So I, uh, I could not find a way to copy and paste the um, address here, only scan it. So I, I, I kind of had to like do a hacky thing where I sent a screenshot to my computer and then... Um, uh, you just, sorry for cutting you off. That also confused me. You just click on a QR and it uh, copies uh, the... Oh. I just, <laughs> okay. That was also very unclear to me. Okay, yeah. What I ended up doing is I ended up going and trying to find the on-chain screen because there is this on-chain menu in the settings and I couldn't find... For some reason, I might be mistaken here, but I feel like that on-chain screen like was like locked or not available to me um, when I first used the wallet. So there is a way to generate fresh Bitcoin addresses from the on-chain screen, but I feel like it was locked when I uh, or something when I first opened the wallet. So um, I might be remembering that wrong, but I, yeah, I had difficulty getting my address. But you know, overall, the QR code that's like ninety nine percent of users are going to use that. So that's good. I would just recommend they put like a copy button or something like that. Kind of cool. Um, receive. Uh, I think when I was trying to find the Bitcoin address, I was like, well, maybe if I go to the receive screen, it'll give me a Bitcoin address there. And one thing I noticed very quickly about the screen is that it's a lightning only receive screen. And I noticed that a lot of other lightning wallets have some kind of option at the bottom to like, oh, you know, do you want to generate, um, you know, a Bitcoin address or an on-chain address? And um, I just kind of took some notes of this, that th this, this wallet seems very opinionated about um, it's lightning first. And it kind of wants to like hide a lot of the on-chain stuff in different screens. Um, so I don't know if that's good or bad. I just kind of wanted to raise that as as a discussion point that th th this wallet kind of handles that a little bit differently than some other wallets. Um, I kept having lots and lots of issues every time I do anything on the app of iOS notifications popping up saying, oh, we've caught, we pasted something from your clipboard. That was driving me crazy. Um, so I very quickly turned this option off. Um, uh, so I'm... Uh, Cheers to the developer for including the option to turn that off. Um, I still just think it's weird that every time I enter a new screen, though, it's like pasting something from the clipboard. It, it really drove me crazy. Um, uh, this button can use a little bit of margin here um, on the left side there. Uh, so I did manage to finally send the on-chain thing, and it, it, you know, it took a little bit just because uh, mempool's full right now, but. Happy to see a message um, that said uh, that notified me when I received my transaction, and then I was also happy to see that when uh, I, I received my transaction, it immediately uh, you know asks me to back up my wallet. So that was cool. So I go to back up my wallet, and um, so this screen it's it's trying to explain to me you know obviously I blotted out my seed phrase and all that, but it's trying to explain to me how to back up the seed phrase. Meanwhile, it, it pops up with a notification saying that it's automatically opening a payment channel. So again, I'm happy to see that it simplifies the payment channel process. Um, and I'm also happy to see that it's explaining the seed phrases. I do think, you know, as a, as a more experienced user, I felt comfortable here, but I could imagine this could be a, um, um, you know, maybe an information overwhelm for a new, a, a brand new Bitcoin user of like, you know, you're, you're, you're being given all this sensitive backup information and that's popping up with a message and all that. Um, I, I'm really, you know, nitpicking there, but um, overall good. It's explaining things to you. Um, on my iPhone XS, I could not read all of the information and I did not have the option to scroll down. Um, so I feel like I really missed some. I, I, I know what it says as a, you know, more experienced user, but a new user is um, missing something, I'm sure. Uh, just as a thought, as an experiment, I decided to, um, when it asked me to re-enter my seed phrase, I re-entered the seed phrase in the wrong order, and it did not notify me that um, I was doing it wrong until I had already entered all 24 words. Um, so what I would suggest is it would be really good is if you enter the word in wrong, like tell the user immediately. I've seen other wallets that do this where it's like if you tap select the wrong word on number three, it you know shows up in red so that you don't go through all 24 words before you you know find out that you did it wrong um so i just think that's more helpful to the user don't don't wait till they get to the end to tell them that they messed up um i was very happy to see the icloud backup that's that's very good um 
automated channel backups are good things. Um, this kind of setting screen is light, nice. I like the ability to change, you know, add a name to the node. Auto open channels, you know, again, as a ex more experienced user, I knew what this meant. I don't know if a new user um, is going to know what the auto open channels means. And again, on my iPhone XS, this was all the text just getting cropped off. Um, I found this a little strange, um, just that I, I can see my pending balance, but I don't see any transactions. And let me just double check now that like all my channels have clear opened or, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, so this is just another thing about this wallet is very opinionated about you get to the main screen and it's lightning only. And all of your on-chain transactions are tucked away in another screen. And I had to go digging to go find a log of all my on-chain transactions. Again, I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's maybe that's a good thing that it's all lightning. Um, it's just, it, it's just, it's just different. And I think to me, it was a little bit confusing seeing that like I've got pending Bitcoin, but I, the transactions themselves are hidden from me. Um, so when I did find it, I did, uh, was able to, you know, click on it, open some transaction details, TXID, blah, blah, blah. Um, I could not, it, it was a little, weird getting out of this screen. Um, again, I'm just getting some like errors on my iPhone where things are getting cropped off. And I had to like, I think I had to like tap around the edge or the margin to get out. So I'd recommend if there could just be like a close button or a back button, I think that that would um, be helpful. Um, and then, yeah, I, I, I just, again, like I already said before, I really like kind of the, the features they're adding here. I think the context uh, feature is um, going to be really cool. I'm curious about exploring that feature more. Uh, could not uh, successfully send uh, at, um, any LN transactions um, as I was building this because I was waiting for my funding channel open transaction to clear on chain. Um, I, I did finally clear as the call was starting, and I'm not. I haven't been able to successfully send the transaction yet. Um, it just kind of beach falls on me and spends every time it. Uh, uh, I try to send to my Breeze wallet. Um, that again, that that may not, that's not necessarily a design thing. That's probably just a, you know, network liquidity kind of thing. Um, but I, you know, never was able to successfully send something. But overall, excited about this wallet. And that was just kind of those are my thoughts, kind of onboarding. Awesome, Steven. As always, thanks for sharing this in that really interesting findings and thanks for um, yeah categorizing them in a clear way so that we can pass along feedback to the developer. Um, any of you guys wants to go next and share the screen to show what they found? Yeah, sure. I'm happy to uh, share a few findings. Um, <clears throat> I'll also leave my screen up for Tiana and Lotus. We actually uh, we did this sort of ensemble. Um, about an hour ago. Um, just a word of warning as well. I couldn't find <laughs> my treasure, so unfortunately I wasn't able to deposit any on-chain uh, things. So slightly limited functionality in terms of we didn't explore the send and receive flows, but I guess to iterate a few of the um, a few of the points made sort of earlier. Um, yeah, I, the first thing I guess is that. Um, I liked uh, a lot of the the information that was kind of shown throughout the application. Um, I mean, first of all, even just creating a new wallet, like this warning sign, um, which is you know kind of basically just saying like it's it's experimental. Um, and there's no one to support you watching your channels offline, etc. And it's kind of just like yeah, cool. I'm going to be a bit reckless. It creates this kind of like fun feel to experimenting the wallet. Um, and then obviously we have sort of certain communications uh, like during sort of at least the onboarding phase of like funding a channel, like making it nice and clear, like we'll oh, send an on-chain um, transaction here. Um, we all kind of noted that like this was kind of confusing and I guess in, um, I accidentally held down the QR code, which then uh, copied the address. Um, but if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't really have known. And a QR code, I guess, is really useful if you have another device. Um, but considering that 
like this is a mobile application and we're all using our mobiles like it's it's pretty hard to uh scan scan your own device from another one of your wallets maybe on your phone or something um so that was i guess one thing which um which was kind of noticed is that that this is not particularly mobile friendly i think is is maybe what i'd say um there were a few other things uh with regards to um I, I liked the the lightning browser however the actual like browser itself i would say is not a maybe not the most um smooth or beautiful kind of like user experience um all of these things um all of these sort of this action bar is located at the bottom of the screen usually i'll probably expect to find that up on the top um and there also come like kind of a, a few a couple of other um things that were just like slightly difficult um it didn't seem like optimized um i guess that's probably the way that i'd say it which may be a bit of a harsh critique because um as john's and a few other mentioned like it's so feature heavy this wallet like it does like a lot of things and i think the fact that like one developer has done this is extremely talented so not to take anything away from that but i guess um being critical of the features themselves i would say that um whilst i liked this sort of lightning stores and services this kind of like shortcut other than that um it felt like a slightly heavy and i guess kind of uh, difficult user experience um the other thing that i did uh notice was just to reiterate i guess what stephen was saying um when I wasn't sure how to uh, copy this address, I thought, okay, cool. Well, maybe I can just like receive uh, an on-chain transaction if I just click the receive button. Um, obviously I couldn't do this because I hadn't opened up a lightning channel, um, which then obviously gave me the indication that, okay, well, perhaps I'm receiving some sort of lightning payment here, or maybe I have to do that first. Um, I liked the use of the sort of labels. Um, I thought that was again like a good a good practice, um, but I was kind of wondering why it even let me go through this process of filling out an amount and stuff like that when it kind of knew that I already didn't have um, any sort of uh, any funds to open a Lightning channel. So perhaps uh, the actual like receive button could on the home page could maybe be disabled just to avoid kind of wasted sort of time and effort um the final thing was the uh the backup itself i don't know why but for some reason um my first when i uh entered the wallet um it was sort of a screen like this um for some reason maybe i'm just right-handed i just went for restore wallet as opposed to create new wallet i just kind of wanted to see what it was like um i'm always interested in like restoring old wallets and and things like that um <laughs> So I took a look at that and immediately I was slightly frustrated. It seemed like there were quite a few um, options, um, but the one option that I didn't have was to be able to travel backwards back to that uh, initial onboarding screen because obviously I hadn't created a wallet and I wasn't actually gonna restore one. I was kind of just exploring, um, which I know for, the, for argument's sake is perhaps my own fault. But in order to actually go back, I had to quit the entire application and then reload that screen. Um, so there's just a few a few quick thoughts. Um, maybe Lota or Tiana, if you guys had anything else, um, that would be a good time to share your thoughts as well. Uh, okay. So, um, so for me, what I found out or what I uh, noticed on the browser Oh, sorry, Ed, could you share your screen again? Oh, yeah, sure. Sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, if we just go to the browser, yeah, exactly. So, I noticed that, um, first of all, I noticed, like, in a regular browser, right, if you want to probably search for, like, a website or something, you can you can type in just the name of the um, website, say, Twitter or something. And it goes through, right? But here I noticed that you have to type in like the, the full URL before like anything happens. If not, it's not going to go. That's what I noticed. I don't know if this is um, intentional, 
And then I also noticed that the on the keyboard here there was no space bar. Maybe this was also like supposed to prevent you from like typing anything other than a URL. But I figured that if maybe you're going for like a native browser experience, maybe that would be something that you want to keep the same. Um, yeah, that, that's just like in addition to some of the things that Ed said. And personally, I think that this is just like a little bit too tight in this space with all of this other um, navigation items. Yeah. So I think that's, that's basically it in addition to some of the things Ed said. Lothar, do you have anything to add? Uh, I guess not. Um, you both have probably said all the things that I had in mind. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think I have some thoughts on the settings, maybe. Um, I see that, obviously, it's a heavy, it has a lot of functionalities. And I see that also the the browser settings are, and the wallet, um, wallet-specific settings are, like, in the same place. And because we have a lot of things going on, it might be difficult to sort of move through like a person that is just like looking for like say a specific browser settings. I would know to like go back to the you know to the wallet to check it. And it might I mean in my mind I, like I wanted to change something. I thought I was you know looking for the settings and I and I noticed that the stuff I was looking for was just on the regular settings. So it might be something to consider. I'm not sure how far how how efficient that might be, but it's just something I was thinking about. Yeah, I don't think I have any other thing to add. Yeah, I mean, I think it's an interesting point with regards to the settings. Um, let's share a link to that. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure, Pablo, I'll do that. Um, I think with regard to the settings, it's kind of both, or it seems like, from a lot of the feedback here that it's kind of both a, a blessing and a curse in some way. Um, we like to have all of these extra settings and these really sort of like custom controls, but then sometimes they can also be quite overwhelming. Um, I think Signal uh, has quite an interesting sort of developer mindset whereby um, they try to sort of reduce optionality um as much as they can and sort of basically provide standardized defaults which don't overload users with so many options and settings and custom controls and custom configurations um and instead sort of try and select the best sort of privacy first um practice yeah as steven just said like there are no power users um so I guess uh, just sort of an interesting thing to to think about when it comes to wallets and settings. Um, awesome. Oh, go ahead, Steven. I want to talk about this Lightning browser. Dig a little deeper on this, um, since several people have brought this up. I'm I'm a little bit confused about what the purpose of the Lightning browser, this browser is, because it seems to me like it's just a web browser. And it's like, I already have two or three of those on my phone. And I'm not sure why I need one in my Lightning wallet. I might be missing something, but I feel like all these services are essentially just websites that I can go to and I can make Lightning payments. And it's just like, you know, if I have the PayPal app so that I can pay with dollars, um, a lot of websites out there accept the dollars as payments. So like, why doesn't the PayPal app have a browser inside of it so that I can go shopping directly inside of the PayPal app? I mean, it's, it's a thought experiment. Mm -hmm. it sounds, yeah. If it sounds silly, yeah. it's supposed to be. Yeah, go on. Yeah, I could um, touch on that. So um, there's this uh, specification called WebLN. And what it does, it allows you to it, it allows a web page to interact with um, a Lightning wallet, right? Now, in the case of um, uh, 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 we have one collaboration in the community. It's called uh, Albi um, or the Lightning Browser Extension, and um, uh, essentially you can click a button on a web page to pay, um, and it will you know pop up the extension, and ask you if you want to like approve this payment. 
Now, why would this be inside of a wallet? Well, um, or like a mobile wallet. So, um, uh, yeah, I guess it's um, uh, one. It's like whilst you're browsing such websites that have uh, web that are web LN enabled, you're then able to um, you know make those payments and stuff directly without having to switch the application. Of course, right? Um, now, okay, that seems you know like a like a bit like roundabout way of doing things. Now, um, uh, 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 there are some other in kinds of interactions that WebLN allows you to do. For instance, um, uh, uh, signing messages, and perhaps in the future, even because um, the spec is being like constantly developed, there's a spec call tomorrow um, relating to this um, to merge WebLN with some um, on like on-chain Bitcoin kind of library, which does something quite similar. Um, so, like, yeah, ideally we could start seeing these kind of like Bitcoin applications um, being created. And until there's a wallet in like Safari, um, uh, 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 these, um, these applications, uh, I think Breeze Wallet also has a one or had one at some point, um, the Lightning browser. Um, I think I see what you're saying. So, mm -hmm. like, if I, if, I, if I were, you know, uh, visiting one of these websites, say it's a bit refill, I just I happen to see them in the browser list. If I were visiting that on my desktop browser, then I could, um, you know, I could install Albi into Chrome and then visit, you know, bit refill. And then I'd be able to use the, the Lightning browser extension to, um, you know, inter interact with that service. But if, if I'm in a mobile browser, um it's not as easy to do that like if i'm using say the mobile version of chrome you know there's not really a browser extension so i can't do that so having a browser kind of embedded in the lightning app is kind of like a workaround for that exactly and um and like um there are other kinds of um like in, like like more interesting interactions than than those that would just be like scanning a QR code to make a single payment, for instance. Um, if the wallet and the browser are integrated, then you're able to do, um, you know, like a payment per second or something. Um, then you're able to do stuff like key send. Um, so we start to see some um, uh, quite interesting interactions um, yeah. that is possible on the web. Um, so I'm, through, I'm all on this mechanism. Thank you. Yeah, I'm all on board with that. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. I, I just want—I just want to make one final comment on this topic, just because I, I think I'm taking us down a rabbit hole. But I think that this is an issue, a user experience issue, that's kind of like bigger this than this wallet, uh, because I see Breeze does the same thing too, and um, I, I imagine other Lightning wallets are going to do this thing of having the browser inside of it. I think that it's—it's it's a kind of a, a user experience issue we need to think about, um, just in the lightning space moving forward about how to you know have like better interoperability between you know apps and stuff because you know like if you pull out your phone uh you know it's very easy to like make the apps interoperable and be like okay um you know there's a button in my browser to automatically share this in safari or there's a um a button in my photo app to send something to evernote or a button to pay somebody via you know a payment app right so it's very easy to have like the different apps um, kind of talking to each other, um, you, you know, and I, I think that like a, a good step forward is having the ability for these various services to, you know, be able to talk to each other with the same like fluency um, that, that, you know, these, these native apps can do. So, yeah, this isn't really a criticism so much of Blixt. I just... I, I personally am like, I, I feel like the browser inside of a wallet is kind of a, a workaround. And, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, where we have better solutions for that, for the whole Lightning ecosystem. I'm done. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Yeah, and one of the challenges that, um, just last point on uh, on that, one of the, um, in terms of interoperability, one of the challenges is that, um, you know, like application, like all the Bitcoin applications are competing for the Lightning uh, protocol and Bitcoin protocol in the URI um, space, right? So um, that's something that makes it kind of difficult. You can't just like click a link and then it opens in, in a specific app because there's multiple apps that are competing for it. But um, uh, I can share my um, my version of this now. Uh, give me a second. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, 
Okay, <laughs> so this is gonna be a bit of a short one. Um, all right, so supporting all the devices. Um, I have um, I've half and half on purpose uh, kept um, a, 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 a old device, um, a, a, a kind of like, um, uh, kind of like, um, helps you experience some of the problems that um, that you know uh, 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 some segment of the global population um, fall into that don't have like the the latest um, you know the latest iPhone um, uh, uh, 13 or whatever 15 20 whatever that they have now um, so uh, this is something that's um, uh, 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 as the operating system becomes a lot older um, you start to stop um, you start you stop from being able to upgrade it and um, and uh, 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 then applications slowly, slowly start becoming um, kind of like, a, uh, yeah, not supporting it. Um, so uh, I mentioned this is like, like, like how does this relate to like the, you know, like this user testing that we're doing for the wallets, right? Well, um, I think it's important to um, cater for those, um, you know, as many segments of the population as possible. And um, yeah, so, um, and, 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 and these kind of things like impact like the user experience and adoption um of of the technology of of, of of bitcoin on a whole right so yeah um but thankfully we have like some awesome developers um uh, uh i can't pronounce his name um <laughs> uh, but the blix developer he's um really awesome and after um less than 24 hours you know the uh an update was pushed um uh it was it wasn't shared on github or anything um uh, uh, uh it, it was shared as a direct message um or yeah and um uh, the problem um and but yeah it was um fixed but um yeah so uh, uh i i was able to get it installed but unfortunately um you know the the application was crashing and i think that was due to 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 some technical problems anyway um so uh i used um the web version to um to 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 look around which was also quite great because i think that's um that's that's an easy way for um, designers to be able to um, to uh, to do some like visual um, uh, visual testing and stuff um, if they want to contribute to the application. So it's really great that they have such features. I haven't seen it with any other wallets um, to be able to like you know just check check the updates in the browser. Um, but yeah, um, uh, 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 in terms of UI. Uh, distinguishing labels and content. So this is on the transaction detail view. Um, I really liked how you were able to like um, set a note there. I couldn't quite understand where the map, um, uh, 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 the location data came from. I think this is some um, specific metadata met that um, that uh, the developer keeps in the um, invoice uh, descriptions, like when generating. Um, uh, invoices within the application. We talked about a specific format for that um, description using colons here. <clears throat> anyway, but um, this list um, could use some um, some touch up on in, in terms of like information hierarchy. Um, I liked how it pulled in um, some of the de de details from. Um, well, I'm assuming it's either from the uh, from the description field or from the um, uh, LNULP stuff, so there's some, some extra metadata in here, which is which is really cool um, to give you context. But it's just like um, there's no hierarchy. Like, what is the important thing that I should be looking at here? What's the um, yeah? Okay, so um, uh, the next step, and I um, um, this is icon um, when you click on the um, re send send Bitcoin. Um, uh, uh, this is icon here that I wasn't quite sure what it did, um, but when you clicked on it, it went to this pay invoice screen. So I really wasn't sure what that icon was and what it meant. And this one seems to be copy and paste, but yeah. Um, but somehow I ended up on this pay invoice. So I'm like, which invoice? But um, I'm assuming maybe this is something to do with um, with the fact that it's uh, in the web version. So maybe some elements may not be as like what's actually seen in the application and it's just for demo purposes, perhaps. Um, uh, yeah, um, one of the other quest um, things was like this um, uh, relative times, using relative times. I kind of feel like every time I see, um, you know, 
like a like an absolute time in a um, in a list, you know, like a feed view or a list view. I kind of feel it was a long time ago <laughs> um, because you expect kind of like um, uh, these, or at least I expect um, these um, relative times to be shown. Um, so like three minutes ago, four minutes ago, and such and such. And um, as the um, as it be becomes more um, difficult, to, like like as it goes further back in time, and you kind of like lose track of like um, of of like when the specific time was um, that you can't just calculate quickly from like three days ago or you know one week ago, seven days. Um, uh, uh, if it's like maybe more than a month or something like that, then um, or maybe longer, then you start to um, uh, probably rely on like these absolute times instead. And um, yeah, uh, 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 maybe perhaps also highlighting just metadata or um, you know these items and the description items um, versus the the time in which it, it it's shown because yeah, um, uh, 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 the bigger question is not when when something was paid because the um, you, it's kind of implied by you know, a sorted list, right? It's, it's implied by a sorted list of like, okay, the things on the top are the most recent and the things on the bottom are um, uh, longer time ago. So the thing that I've, um, that's more difficult to determine here is like, what was it that was paid? Um, yeah. Um, uh, okay, yeah, so um, uh, Stephen mentioned this one as well with the, um, the on-chain kind of being like a second class which um, I completely understand in terms of like the application philosophy. Um, the only thing though is that, you know, um, I feel like it should, um, it should still kind of like be within the regular receive flow or send flow because um, just provide, like it could be de-emphasized, de but just provide a way to, to like, uh, yeah, to, switch it from, from, from the same area because like, at least it's like one path to getting, like, like it's a known path to make a send. Like the user wants to know, like the user would want to make an, like a, a specific action and that action is to send. They don't, maybe they don't really um, know how to distinguish between on-chain and off-chain. Um, so like they enter the flow um, with the context of like, I want to send something and then um, they're like, oh, okay, no, I need to send it via like on chain. Where do I do that? And then there's like some toggle to to do it. Um, yeah. Um, uh, 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 there's also a different um, design pattern going on here, um, where the um, the invoice is just presented like straight away here. Um, and Moon does a good job at this. Um, they present a QR code with zero um, zero amount that you can like straight away send. Um, but yeah, so this, yeah, I think it could be um, done. Um, and I think that's all I got to with the, um, <laughs> with the web view, unfortunately. Um, I wasn't able to add contacts or um, play around with that as much. But, um, but yeah, it looks very promising. Awesome, Jones. Can you share that uh, Figma file in the chat so that I can keep it in my no. collection no. of Figma files? No, yeah. no, not at all. I, I do have a fetish for Figma files, so please. Yeah, but uh, then you anyway, see my other review. Uh, yeah. Well, I never thought I'd hear that from you, Pat. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I will be Figma guy one day, I promise. I need to make you guys happy. Since you're old now using GitHub, now I need to switch back to Figma. Anyway, I have like a few things to share, but uh, we are like eight minutes uh, into discussion. So I just want to, to discuss... And I'm not even sure that my screen will work, so let me know because I'm, I have like quite a few things going on. So, can you guys see Steven here? Awesome. So, yep. um, yeah, I didn't do it in Figma. So, uh, very quickly, like when you generate a wallet, it says welcome screen. Uh, takes a little bit of time, so I would prefer it, it if it says what's going on here. It's instead of having a spinner, maybe we are generating your wallet, please wait or whatnot. Maybe this was unique to my experience. Maybe it's faster for your guys. So that's like first feedback that I have. Uh, then very concretely, like when you generate an invoice, it marks it here. I'm not sure if you can see the green. So I assume that this invoice was paid, but actually it was opened 
this was a weird experience. I would use a different color when uh, having an, an invoice that hasn't been paid yet. So this invoice hasn't been paid and it looks like it is. Even though it has open, I don't think open is very clear. Like if, if it was pending maybe, or if, if it was uh, yellow, for example, it would make sense. But like green, I associate it with received funds. Um, yeah, I also had this feedback with the QR code that we mentioned. I won't go into that. What really bothered me was that when I had to fund my wallet, uh, there was no indication on the screen that there that uh, I need to wait for confirmations. And uh, I would appreciate if they added a warning like, hey, uh, you know, we need to wait for X amount of confirmations or, or anything. I, I simply waited for a few hours, then came back and then it worked. So I didn't receive any notification or whatnot that, that they, there needs to be. And I'm not sure, correct me, feel free to interrupt me if you guys I uh, had seen the notification that you need to wait for confirmations, but I haven't. So that was one more. Uh, this one, um, yeah, just slight overlap here that can be fixed very easily. So I won't bother you guys with that much. What I really wanted to discuss, actually, maybe we have a few minutes, is this initial onboarding. And here you can see a single developer that, uh, you know, uh, creates a wallet and develops it. And now you can see here how the onboarding experience is different because with this wallet, you have like a minimum of 13 US dollars to get onboarded. And yeah, you also need to wait for confirmations because, you know, a developer of Blixp wallet is not willing to take the same risk as a company uh, that uh, Breeze does. Breeze, if you guys remember, uses zero amount confirmation for opening channels. It's very fast. It's you're onboarded right away. If I was to show this wallet to a friend, I would usually use some minor test amount, you know, to, to showcase wallet uh, for them. And I, uh, they would expect it most likely to work right away. So this is where Moon shines, I think, uh, compared to other wallets. They offset the fee, they eat up the fee for you, and then they, uh, uh, you know, uh, later charge you this fee. But that initial onboarding is something that and I understand that it's maybe not uh, possible for a single developer to you know use this kind of model i just thought it's interesting discussion you know how how we onboard people how, how do we make sure that uh, there are no financial limits for them and so on so if you want you can discuss that if you guys have any thoughts uh, on the onboarding that's pretty much everything on my end um yeah feel free to take over while i try to turn off my screen yeah that's a that's a really good point you know, we only have a few minutes left here, basically. And you you mentioned in the chat here what we what we should submit to the dev. To me, it seems like the biggest feedback is that a lot of us struggled with getting actual transactions to work. So focusing on that, making that the, there are other things. There's small stuff. There's some overlap things, but just getting users to successfully fund their wallet and make transactions that seems like it should be the absolute highest priority. That seems like a mix of uh, informing users about what's going on in the background, that they're waiting for confirmations, maybe adding a little bit of extra information in certain places, trying to fix some technical errors that maybe pop up. But to me, that would be the primary thing to focus on, is try to make sure that everybody who starts using this wallet successfully gets their Bitcoin on there and successfully uh, can make Lightning transactions. What do you think? Yeah, I would agree with that as well. Um, uh, 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 just like easing out the onboarding because that's probably um, like like the other things um, are probably like, um, like yeah, the other innovations with contacts and stuff, it's like they have it already. They've like already like set those foundations of like um, having these cool experimental features and stuff. Um, so when competing against like, um, like the larger, um, uh, 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 applications, um, uh, uh, yeah, definitely needs to, 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 to as closely as possible, um, try to like match that onboarding experience. Cause I think that's what make them, um, so kind of like user-friendly. Yeah. I, I don't necessarily mean making it free. It's just that uh, getting people to actually be able to do it. Yeah. And as quickly as possible as well. That's, um, that's that's an important part but yeah there are going to be trade-offs and stuff like with the size um of like the amount of resources and whatnot but yeah definitely agree 
Yeah, I, I, I had a question like, do, do, will there be an LSP that uh, can help this uh, onboarding? Like maybe they can use an external if developer is unwilling to lock maybe two or three Bitcoin in a Lightning Network on his own to accept zero confirmation to easier onboard people. Are there any external LSPs that might be able to do that, that he can use in order to, you know, improve the experience of users? Because, yeah, I can see a single developer cannot really, you know, provide the same experience with the same amount of risk as well. So that was maybe something that I thought was an interesting, but yeah, I do agree with priorities and yeah, making onboarding smoother. Yeah, um, I was talking with Bosch uh, this week about um, like, um, you know, the LSP, uh, LSP ecosystem and what that would look like. And um, uh, 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 um, we started making some like explorations about like, um, like like a directory and and um you know the application instead of be bounded to one lsp it's now something that you're able to switch and um and go between them um uh, 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 uh also this concept of like a uncle jim um lsp you know where you're setting up one for your friends and family and maybe earning some sets from routing or whatever for them or if it's just completely free or whatever um or your community and whatnot um uh, uh, and what is um, what's quite interesting um, with what uh, the Blix developer has done? It's um, there's this uh, uh, library called Dunder, I think it is, um, which is kind of like a like a LSP in the box that gets you like started. Um, like if you want to become an LSP, you can just like spin this up. Um, so if more and more people start doing this and they have different kind of like risk profiles and monetizations um, and stuff, then we, I think we start seeing a very interesting ecosystem. So yeah, I'm really excited to see applications like this. I can't stress that enough. It's, it's such a good thing for Bitcoin. Yeah, that's super cool. It's crazy for one person to, to do all this stuff. It's really awesome. Yeah, awesome. I guess we'll collect the feedback from all the Figma files in Google Docs and uh, forward it uh, to the developer of Blix Wallet. Chris, are you willing to assist me again with <laughs> gathering the information somewhere where we can maybe open up issues or just communicate with a developer? Yeah, sure. I'll do the same thing. Start a Google Doc and then try to go through all the Figma files and maybe the video again and just try to uh, systematically organize by screen by the order of the user experience uh, with all the relevant links. So it's like a bullet list with links out. So it's easier easier to kind of look at it and make sense of it. Yeah, okay, let me know. I, I gathered all the links in case you lost some. <laughs> so mm -hmm. do let me know. Um, that said, guys, we are like one hour in the call. Well, let's wrap it up with the recording and yeah, whoever wants to discuss Blixt or whatever later on we can. So I'm not sure who is recording, but we can probably stop it right now. Thanks for for being here today and for showcasing. I think it was amazingly productive meeting and happy to see the progress we are making every week. So thank you. Thank you.